And the, my hypothesis was that not only would energy be one of these problems, but that wherever it had appeared in the order that people had suggested it, if you moved it to the top of the list and you imagined a world where that problem was now solved, just totally solved, it's gone, that if you could imagine that, you would find that at least five of the remaining nine problems on the list now had a path to a reasonable answer, where in the absence of having solved the energy problem, it wasn't clear that there was an acceptable answer at all. For example, uh, to most people's accounting of problems, uh, food is right up there near the top. Uh, well, the answer to the food problem is, well, I say C, problem number two, water. In fact, seawater. You know, let's, uh, let's purify it. If we had the energy, we could have the water, we could irrigate the land, we could make the food. Now, I realize that there is more involved in making food than just water. You have to have uh, uh, fertilizer, you have to have fertile soil. Well, in fact, fertilizer takes a tremendous amount of energy to make. Uh, if you've got the energy, you could make that. If necessary, you could build, in fact, uh, vast greenhouses if you had the energy infrastructure to build the materials and maintain it and so forth. You can solve the food problem if you've got energy. And then the environment, which for many people these days is, is near the top of the list, I think most of us would agree that the single biggest factor affecting the quality of our environment is the energy that we use and the way we use it. If it weren't fossil energy, if when we burn it we didn't make uh, NOx that generates ozone, uh, our environment would be vastly cleaner. So we've got to solve the energy problem anyway. Uh, we should look for a solution that simultaneously solves the energy-related problems of the environment.